<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome to your latest Chelsea news. This picture is uh, quite a statement picture, I believe, from yesterday's match. I mean, all the issues that has taken place over the last you know, international break and all the kerfuffle that happened with the ownership situation, both the owners, Baghdad Bali and Todd Bowley not getting along together. It was actually good to see them both together uh, in, in that West Ham Stadium, London Stadium, and witnessing a complete capitulation of West Ham and witnessing a very strong performance from Chelsea Football Club. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that owners are all back and, and it's, it, there's no issues between them. I still believe there is, from a from a financial standpoint, <clears throat> from a commercial standpoint, there's probably still, <clears throat> excuse me, there's still probably issues in, in, in their relationship. But it's good to see that for the greater benefit, for the broader perspective that they're together, they're, you know, showing the solidarity uh, and showing the rest of the world, showing the rest, you know, the fan base as well, that look, we might have our differences, but for the greater benefit, and for the benefit of Chelsea Football Club, for the benefit of the players, the manager, we can still come together and be civil. All of this civil war and whatnot that was happening internally, we don't want to outlay that out front. So, look, this is good. At least they can put away their differences and still show their in front of everyone that you know they're in they're in this together to a certain level. In the background, I still believe there are issues. But overall, you know, one thing that I don't want to see ever again in the next international break or whenever, I don't want any of these ownership news to come out publicly. If you've got issues, sort it out internally. You, all of this stuff does not need to be publicized to journalists to then sensationalize the fan base. It's just not needed. You guys sort it out. If one needs to buy out the other, buy them out. And if if the relationship can't continue in a respectable manner, then, then stop it. C carry on in a new structure. But this, ladies and gentlemen, for me, was a good gesture, a bit of a statement. And, and great that they got to witness such a very, very good victory. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Enzo Maresca. We need to talk about Enzo Maresca. I feel like... There's a lot of praise that we need to give to this particular manager. And I like this manager's upfront um, character. I, I like how he's very brutal and very honest when it comes to giving opinions or, or his assessment on a game or his assessment on a player. He was asked post-match yesterday by some of the journalists that, it seems like players are buying into you. You know what? What's the what's your secret behind all of this? How how have they bought into your philosophy, your style of play so quickly? And he said straight away, "This is what he quoted. It's quite easy. If they don't buy into my ideas, they don't play." And do you know what? He's he probably means that. He absolutely means that. I, one of the biggest things that that I was worried about when Enzo Maresca was hired and he was appointed as Chelsea manager is that. I was, I was wondering, is he actually going to be that authoritarian? Is he going to have some level of authority in the team? Is he going to be able to impose himself? There's a lot of you know, strong characters in the team. There's a lot of players that are on you know, fairly decent wages at a young age and they've got long-term contracts. There's some level of ego as well. Every, every player wants to do well for themselves. Is he going to be able to go in there and control this whole situation? And it looks like he has. It looks like... He is the boss. He is the final boss, and he makes the decision. And the fact that he's come out and he said, if they don't buy in, they won't play. As I said, I think he truly means that. You know, we've already seen a few players that are not part of the squad, and that's not because they don't buy in. It's more the fact that he just doesn't think they're suitable. But down the track, God forbid, if there is any issues with any of the players who show some level of disgruntledness, uh, in regards to the way we play, I'm pretty sure he's going to hook them off and say, look, if you don't believe, then you're not going to stick around. Enzo Maresca, we're on the right path. And this is what I like. He's humble as well. Check this out. But this is a long journey. Because we won versus West Ham and we're in a good moment, it looks like everything is fine, but not everything is fine. We could attack and defend better, but it's just a matter of time. I love it. He's right. He's absolutely right. We can attack and defend better. 
This is what we said post-West Ham game. Very good victory, strong victory, and a very uh, you know opportunistic victory against Bournemouth as well after suffering long parts of that game. I love the fact Enzo Maresca, he keeps it, he keeps it real. He's not going out there and fluffing information that, yeah, we're Chelsea Football Club, we need to be winning trophies ASAP. No, he's he's actually realistic. He knows the situation very well. And he's humble and he's quite confident to talk about that. He's not shying away from it. Just a couple of weeks ago when we dropped points against Crystal Palace, he was saying, yeah, it seems like dropping points for Chelsea Football Club has become normal. Once again, yeah, to, to, to certain parts of the fan base, it, had, it has become a tad bit normal. Slowly, hopefully, we're turning this around and hopefully we can create a bit of a momentum moving into the next few fixtures. And he said that just calm yourselves down. Good, we've played a good game, but we need to see consistency. We need to see seven, eight, nine, ten games. Ten game span of very, very good results. An improvement. And it can be noticeable over the last few games that defensively we are looking a lot better. There is still some concerns in midfield. Some parts of the attack can be a little bit better. Some individuals can be a little bit more better. Of course. And this is exactly what Enzo Maresca is saying. And he's keeping the fan base level-minded. And that is fantastic to see. Enzo Maresca is the first manager since Pep Guardiola in 2016 to win his first three away matches in charge. Fantastic. Excellent work from Enzo Maresca. As I said, what I really like about him is he's got a every match we go in, it seems like we have a plan. We have a you know an idea as to how we want to attack the opposition. Now the execution is the issue, but the plan is clear. You can see what we're trying to do. Execution is an issue, and this is what we are trying to improve on, executing the game plan in a better manner. One of the best things that I'm seeing in the last couple of matches is defensively, we look to be far more compact. We look to be far more resolute. Overall, we look to be a lot more aware. Yes, there are some little shaky moments here and there, mostly Wesley Fofana, um, but hopefully that will get corrected down the track. But this in itself is a very, very good <clears throat> record to have and is the first manager since Pep Guardiola in 2016 to win his first three away matches in charge. Fantastic, fantastic. Jamie O'Hara, ex-Spurs. This guy has always got a lot to say about Chelsea. And generally, he's, he's, um, you know, he's got a lot of negative things to say. And uh, look, this is a nice, positive little comment from him. We dig out Chelsea and Bowley. But I'll tell you what, they've put some squad together. They'll turn you over, mate. Look, first of all, this is the thing. He thinks it's it's still Bowley that's running the show. He, he doesn't know who Egbali is. And that, this is what I get annoyed about pundits like Jamie O'Hara. They actually have no idea about Chelsea Football Club yet. They want to talk about Chelsea Football Club. No problems. But this is a nice comment. But it, it also looks like he's a bit of a flip-flop. All this time he's been talking down. And all of a sudden now, oh, we've put a good squad together. Look, I think most of us have said that there are talented players. But there are some distinct issues, you know, in defense. Look, if Levi Colwell can can continue be like that, then we can start saying that okay, he can be a boss in defense. But overall, we still, I still believe we don't have a proper boss. But Levi Colwell continue this way, you can potentially become a boss. Tosa and Wesley Fofana, they still need to show a lot more consistency. Benoit Badishil and Desasi, well, let's not talk about them right now. In midfield, we still need to get that balance right. Yes, a couple of. Very, very good performances from Moses Caicedo, but there's still some chink in the armor, I feel, in midfield that we can we can rectify. Obviously, Romeo Lavia is still injured. Renato Viga has shown some level of um, composure as well at t whenever he's been given the opportunity, but he's also feels a bit shaky at times. Enzo Fernandez, we need to we need to figure out exactly how we can you know, get the best out of Enzo all the time. So, look, midfield, there's a bit of a there's a bit of an issue, I feel. And up front, obviously, look, Nicholas Jackson scores the two goals. But we know, we know that an out-and-out -out striker is much needed. However, we are all happy to be proven wrong. If Nicholas Jackson continues this in this vein on a regular basis, no problems. Then we can stop talking about the striker. But coming back to the point in regards to the squad, there's a lot of talented players, no doubts, but there are some distinct issues still. However, if this season continues in this vein where we're producing good you know, results and we're developing well, then, of course, we can, we can have a different opinion on it. But 
to sit here right now and what Jamie O'Hara is saying that we've we've put some squad together. We need to calm down about that. Absolutely, we need to still calm down about that. But this is the thing. Jamie O'Hara, he's got no idea about Chelsea Football Club. Tossin last night, bubbles to burst. Tossin after the game, pop, pop. I mean, that is a bit cheeky. Uh, a lot of people were saying, Tossin, please delete that. You know, don't get too cocky before the game. Look, I mean, it would have come back to bite him, of course. A little bit of arrogance is okay. Bubbles to burst. That's fine. At least he didn't overdo it. And then obviously we got the good victory and Tosin was able to, um, you know, put put out a common pop pop, which which has gone for us, which is perfect. Tosin um, goes on to say, I think everybody knows our squad is phenomenal. You can take any player, you can swap any player in and out, and it's still going to be a high level. Look, definitely in terms in the wings, we've got some high level players. But as I said, striker, Jackson needs to show consistency. In defense, we need to show consistency. Even Tosin himself needs to show consistency. Levakov is probably the only one that is starting to show some level of very, very good consistency. And that is what I've expected from Levakov for a long time. And it's great that it's coming along. And midfield, we can get a lot better. And Enzo Mariska himself has said that there is a lot of room for improvement. So, yes, great. Tosin's going out there and saying we have a phenomenal squad, but we need to work hard all the time. Now, Moses Caicedo, one particular midfielder that I've recently said he's been phenomenal. Check this out. Moses Caicedo is the only player to win 30-plus ground duels and make 20-plus tackles. I talk about this on a regular basis. People seem to misconstrue my point of view. It's very important, ladies and gentlemen. With the ball, yes, it's equally important to be very good and technically good and be able to build out from the back and spread those passes up front no problems but off the ball we do have oppositions that come at us they press hard they want to win the you know jewels in midfield it's important we have players with athleticism that can win these jewels on a regular key thing in football you'll notice you don't win enough jewels in midfield or in defense i'm telling you you're most likely going to lose the match you have to win your ground jewels. You have to win your aerial jewels as much as you can. High percentages. So this is not a shock to me that Moses Kaiser's performances have been great because he's putting in these numbers. Check this out. 30 plus ground jewels and make 20 plus tackles in the Premier League this season. And he has the best jewel success rate of any player to contest 50 plus jewels, 64.41%. This is why... Moises Caicedo shines out like a beautiful diamond for the past few games. It's clear to see he's bossing it. He's winning duels left, right, and center. And equally, he's good on the ball. Look at the assist he produced for Nicholas Jackson against West Ham. Wow, what a nice through ball. This is what we need in midfield. You you definitely need to be good on the ball, no problems. But equally, you've got to do these sort of dirty work. It's important. Very, very important. And I'm glad that Moses Kaiser has been doing that. Now, on the side note, ladies and gentlemen, since we've got, we're going to play Brighton next up, Brighton, we're going to talk about that all throughout the week. I've got a video coming out uh, for the Premier League wrap-up, which I want to do on a regular basis. Do check that out tomorrow when it's out. Um, UK time, that is tomorrow. Brighton manager Fabian Hutzler won't be on the touchline versus Chelsea next weekend. He's been sent off today. Brighton next up. Going to be a very big game. They play good football, but at the same time, they are open. They can be got in defense. They, they, they play this brand of football where they do give away a lot of chances. And the fact that their manager is not going to be in the touchline at Stamford Bridge, for me, that's already a tick mark because, yeah, he's... he's I'm sure, look, all of the game plan is going to be given prior anyway. However, not having your manager there in the sideline for the players to look upon is a, is a big deal. And, and being at Stamford Bridge, no manager, I think that is advantage us off the back of two victories for us and Brighton coming off two draws as well. So we are moving into this fixture with good momentum and Brighton already looks like there's a setback so that's fantastic news for us let's see if there's any other news before we wrap things up ladies and gentlemen uh doesn't look like there is any other news at the moment so yeah that is the latest 
Hope you guys have enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen. Smash up the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe and please comment on everything we spoke about, the ownership, solidarity, and um, Enzo Maresca's brutal honesty. Let me know your thoughts. Smash up the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, take care. See ya.